Welcome everyone to Discover This. Well, today we're overlooking Poway, California. And the reason we're here is because this is where Blink got their star, Blink 182. And today is all about Blink 182 and their history in San Diego County. So strap yourself in and let's go for a ride. So I'd be remiss if we didn't start here at Poway High School. This is where Tom DeLong went to high school. Well, except for one semester. Yeah, Tom DeLong went to high school here at Poway High. And in his junior year, uh, he showed up to a basketball game drunk. So he was expelled from here and he had to spend a semester at a different high school. But then he was allowed to come back here and he ended up graduating from here. So in the spring semester of 1992, Tom Long got an interdisciplinary transfer from Poway High School to Rancho Bernardo High School. And Rancho Bernardo High School is part of the same school district, however it's in just over the city line in the city of San Diego. But this is where Tom DeLong went to high school for the spring semester of his junior year. So while he's here, he befriends a guy by the name of Carrie Key. And that's significant because Carrie Key's girlfriend, at the time anyway, was a gal by the name of Ann Hoppus. Now Ann Hoppus had a brother named Mark, and he had already graduated high school up in the Ridgecrest area of California. But she knew that Mark and Tom had the same kind of likes and music and things, so she figured they'd get along pretty good. And Mark was getting ready to move down here to the San Diego County area. But another person that Tom met here at Rancho Bernardo High School was another student here by the name of Scott Rayner. And Scott Rayner was a drummer. And pretty soon Tom and Scott are jamming together. In 1992, Mark Hoppus moves to San Diego to enroll at Cal State San Marcos. And Ann Hoppus introduces Mark to Tom, and they begin to write songs together. Tom, Mark, and Scott form a band. They call it Blink. So that's the house that Tom DeLong grew up in. That's the house he first met Mark Hoppus at. And that's the house he would practice, and Blink would practice here, and. The neighbors would make noise complaints and call the cops. And Tom lived in the garage. He had a room in the garage there. This is in Poway, California. And as a story told by Ann Hoppus, the first time that Tom and Mark met here at the house, Mark met a, made a dare that he could climb this light pole right here. So he did, he climbed the light pole, but on the way down he decided to jump. And he ended up breaking both ankles. Although, some stories says it's both legs, but I think it was the ankles. So, a successful dare and a not so much successful dare. But anyway, this is the house Tom DeLong grew up in, in Poway, California. Well, in 1993, Mark gets a job here in Poway, California at Warehouse Records, which was at 12624. Poway Road in this shopping center here and I believe it's where the this Dollar Tree is now Warehouse Records closed years ago if you remember all that but yeah Mark got a job at Warehouse Records and he ended up befriending the manager guided by the name of Pat Secor who became an early friend of Blink supporter of Blink even a benefactor of sorts so yeah, Mark Hoppus, Warehouse Records, 1993, Poway, California. All right, so there's some discussion about where Blink's first show was, their first concert. And there's a large consensus of people that think that it was here at the Spirit Club in San Diego. And if you watched our uh, concert venue video on the Spirit Club and its new incarnation as Brick by Brick. 
you got the history of the Spirit Club, but anyway, Blink played here at the Spirit Club in March of 1993. And again, a lot of people think that was their first show. We're here in downtown San Diego at the corner of Market and Union. And this was the site of the original Soma. Now, if you saw our video on punk rock venues in San Diego, we talked about the original Soma. This used to be a warehouse. Actually, it used to be a slaughterhouse. But a lot of punk rock bands came through here before they tore it down and built this place here. But if you recall that video, or if you saw it, or if you know anything about the history of Soma, Soma stands for South of Market. So that's where, we're out, where, where we are, South of Market on Union. And Blink played here in April of 1993. One of their first shows, a very early show for Blink, when Blink, actually. They also returned here for shows in May of 1993 and July of 1993 at the original Soma here in downtown San Diego. And Blink made it to the South Bay area of San Diego back in September of 1993 here at 1671 Palm Avenue which a lot of people say is Imperial Beach. It's actually San Diego but Imperial Beach is just down there a couple blocks. This used to be the Gorilla Pit a live music venue in one of the places Blink played. The Gorilla Pit in Imperial Beach slash San Diego. 1993. Okay, we're here in El Cajon, California. And this is the location of, it says Double Time Productions, Double Time Recording Studio. And Blink did a number of recordings at Double Time. Now this is the new location and we're going to go show you where Blink did all the recordings at the original location. So let's go check that out. Okay, we're now in Santee, California. 11038 Larkridge Street here in Santee is where Double Time Studios used to be originally. And in January of 1994, the band recorded the Buddha cassette here at Double Time with Pat Secor funding the cost of the recording. You remember Mark's manager from the warehouse. And he starts, you know, Pat Secor starts Filter Records to help distribute. The band comes back to Double Time Studios here in June of 1994 to record two songs that eventually appear on the Short Bus EP. And in late 1994, the band records Cheshire Cat at a studio in L.A., but they bring the recordings back here to Double Time and redo the guitars and vocals here at this location. So the original Double Time Studios, recording studios, Santee, California. Now there's another address in the Rancho Bernardo area, Poway area, that's associated with Blink. And if you were lucky enough to get one of the original Buddha cassettes, there was a flyer in there, a letter, basically, from Mark, thanking quite a vast number of people that had, uh, had helped in some way or another with Blink and getting that cassette made. But at the bottom of that, uh, Mark had put an address if you wanted to write Blink, and it was 17338 Francisco Drive in Rancho Bernardo. And he called it Blink World Headquarters. Now in later editions of the Buddha cassette, in that letter, they had changed it to a P.O. box. But at one time, Mark said this was Blink World Headquarters. This was the site of the second incarnation of Soma in the Morena area of San Diego. And the band played here at this new location in Linda Vista on April 9th, 1994. Then again on April 23rd, 1994. Then again on May 27th, 1994. And we'll just rattle off the shows they played here because they played here a number of times. This is like their home away from home. So June 17th, 1994. 
July 16, 1994. August 12, 1994. They came back here September 2nd, 1994. October 2nd, excuse me, October 7th, 1994. They returned on February 24th, 1995. And June 17th, 1995. July 27th, 1995. September 23rd, 1995. October 22nd, 1995. And again, January 27th, 1996. And the night before they played here at Soma, they played in Tijuana at Mr. Crown's. Back here at Soma on March 30th, 1996. October 24th, 1996. And November 1st, 1996. The second phase of Soma. So many punk shows played here. We included this uh, version of Soma in one of our music venue videos, so you can check that out also. And here's an added bonus for you. This was the backstage loading area for Soma when bands played here. But this is also where they filmed part of the M&M's video. The the video that got banned, the original M&M's video, where the shootout scene, this is where the shootout scene was held. So I'm not going to show you that video, I'll show you some stills, but uh, you can look it up. Look up the original M&M's video by Blink, and this is where it was filmed, right back here, the shooting scene. This is behind Soma Number 2 in the Linda Vista area, Morena Boulevard. And with Travis, they play here again at Soma on October 24th and 25th, 1998. And then again on November 22nd, 1998. Okay, we are on 16th Street in downtown San Diego at the corner of C Street. That's uh, San Diego City College there. And this block right here used to be full of businesses and storefronts and they were all bulldozed to make way for this this building here which is also part of San Diego City College but one of the businesses that used to be here was a place called Cafe Chabalaba and they would have local bands come in and play I believe it was an all-ages venue really small but they would have local bands come in and play and Blink was no different. They came and played at Cafe Chabalaba on June 4th, 1994. 4901 Marina Boulevard. This is the home of Cargo Records, Cargo Music. And Blink signs with Cargo in late 1994. So if you know your Blink history, there was a Blink in Ireland, kind of a techno band. And they got wind that there was a band in San Diego called Blink. So they kind of started a little bit of a fuss about that. So there was some discussion with Blink San Diego's management and things, and the guys in Blink here in San Diego decided to change their name to Blink 182. So Blink's management sent a letter to Cargo Records letting them know, and then Cargo Records sent out some advertising. But August 3rd, 1995, that's when the band changed their name. Then in November 1996, the band ends up signing with MCA Records. Well, we're here in downtown El Cajon. And this building here, at 168 East Main Street, used to be a music venue called Soul Kitchen. And a number of bands played in here. Uh, Bikini Kill, Jimmy Eat World, Refused, Fluff. Pansy Division, lots of others. And Blink played here on September 23rd, 1994. 
at Soul Kitchen in El Cajon, California. So this building here in the Ocean Beach area of San Diego, 2228 Bacon Street, used to be a venue called Dream Street. And Dream Street had a lot of, a lot of bands come through and play in Dream Street. And on October 15th, 1994, Blink played here. They opened for the great Agent Orange. Now, here, well, here used to be Dream Street anyway. Now the North Side Tavern. Well, 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 the San Diego Sports Arena. Blink-182 has a little bit of history here at this uh, particular facility. And it all started when they played the Soma New Year's Eve gig, which uh, Soma used to hold these very large punk rock things uh, every New Year's Eve for quite a number of years. But Blink played on the... Uh, their first one anyway, December 31st, 1994, here at the San Diego Sports Arena. And then they came back the following year, December 31st, 1995, playing here. And then in 1996, they got on the Warp Tour, and the Warp Tour played in the parking lot here at the San Diego Sports Arena. And then they came back here on December 31st, 1997, for the Soma New Year's Eve gig. This park on Overland Avenue in the city of San Diego used to be called Missile Park. And there used to be a very large General Dynamics facility here. And, you know, they built the Atlas rocket at this facility. And as part of the facility, they, they built a park for the employees to come hang out and whatnot. And one of the focal points of the park was a big Atlas rocket was in the middle of the park. Well, after General Dynamics moved on, um, the YMCA came in and took over the park and they built a skate park here. And it was still called Missile Park, uh, but Missile Park Skate Park. And in March 31st of 1995, Blink-182 came through here and played at the skate park. And then they came back the next month in April April 29th, 1995 to be specific, and played here again as part of the big May Day Festival that used to be an annual thing in San Diego. But what was Missile Park? It's got a different name now, but still here on Overland Avenue, right behind the YMCA. Now Blink and Blink-182 were no strangers to play in college campuses, and San Diego was no different. And they played here at San Diego State University more than a few times. Now at San Diego State University, Aztec Center used to look a whole lot different. And there's a couple concert halls in here, the back door and Montezuma Hall. Uh, we did a video about those on our When College is Rocked video, but those are no more. But they bulldozed the old Aztec Center and built this new one. But there was a place back in the old Aztec Center called Monty's Den. Kind of a coffee house slash just hangout place. But they would bring in bands to play at lunchtime or sometimes in the evening. Mostly local San Diego bands or local bands, San Diego County, Orange County, that kind of thing. And Blink played here on May 13th, 1994 for a free noontime concert out on the patio of Monty's Den. And then they came back on October 4th, 1995, and played inside at Monty's Den. So that was their beginning of playing at San Diego State. And Blink-182 came back to San Diego State University, and they played the open-air theater, and it was part of radio station 91X's X-Fest. And Blink-182 played here on June 12th, 1999. San Diego State University Open Air Theater. So Blink-182 finally moved up to play in arenas. And they came to San Diego State and they played Cox Arena. Now for those of you Beavis and Butthead types, Cox was spelled C-O-X. It's now called Viejas Arena, but same place. And they played here on April 26, 1998. 
and they came back again on October 30th, 1999. And again on New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2000. And on January 22nd, 1997, the band played here at another great venue, the Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach, California. So we're down here in the Mission Beach area of San Diego. The surf in the sand and the hobos. And right over here, this building here used to be a place called Cane's. And Cane's was a, a venue held many, many concerts. People, I mean, just probably every band you could think of played Cane's at one time or another. I mean, even Prince did like an after concert party here and played a few songs. And, but anyway, the band played here at Cane's on May 25th, 1997. Then if you remember in June of 1998, Scott Rayner was fired from the band, reportedly for drinking too much, although there was probably some other underlying issues. And then the band got Travis Barker from the Aquabats to be their new drummer. And the first concert they played in San Diego in their hometown with Travis Barker was here at Kane's on June 24th, 1998. So, a little bit of Blink history here at what was once Cane's in Mission Beach. In 1997, the band was back on the Warp Tour. And it came through to San Diego. And they played in the Mission Bay area at Hospitality Point. And the band played here on July 2nd, 1997. kind of a nice temporary venue a lot of other concerts played here but one of the warp tours and the band plays here at University of California San Diego as part of the snow core tour they played at Remac Arena it's called something else now but that's the tour that was uh, had a lot of friction between Mark and Tom and Scott and that was kind of the beginning of the end for Scott on that tour. In early 1999, the band came here to Signature Sound Recording Studios at 5038 Ruffner Road in San Diego to record Enema of the State. They recorded it a few other places too, but this was, this was one of the main ones. Then in early 2001, Blink-182 recorded Take Off Your Pants and Jacket here and a couple places in Hollywood. And they also recorded part of the album that just, it's either called Blink-182 or Untitled, whatever you want to call it. And as an added piece of trivia, Boxcar Racer also recorded their album here. Now another place in the Rancho Bernardo area, very close to Poway, right next door, in Blink history, is a place called Studio West. And that's at 11021 Via Frontera. And that's where Enema of the State was recorded in early 1999. And in 1999, the band was back on the Warp Tour and playing here at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. June 30th, 1999. And Blink-182 finally migrated up to big outdoor amphitheaters, or sheds, some people call them. And this is down here in Chula Vista, California. This is the, now it's called the North Island Credit Union Amphitheater but it used to be called Coors Amphitheater and it had a few other names in between, but Blink-182 played here on May 11th, 2000 and again on September 21st, 2001 and on April 25th, 2002 
and again on June 24th, 2004. Well, we're in Hazard Center, shopping center in San Diego, Mission Valley area, if you're familiar with the, uh, the layout of San Diego. Right alongside Friars Road here and right near the uh, 163 freeway. But back in the 90s and early 2000s, Hazard Center had a warehouse records, if you remember warehouse records, and kind of a standalone uh, chain record store like Tower Records and all that. But back in June 17th, 2001, Blink-182 came to Hazard Center to the Warehouse Records and did a in-store signing. Now, Warehouse Records is no longer uh, out of business a long time ago, along with all the other chain record stores, but Blink-182 was here in 2001 at Hazard Center doing an in-store signing. And in January 2003, the band rents a house in Rancho Santa Fe, which is a very uh, high-end exclusive area in San Diego County. You know, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Janet Jackson had a house in there at one time, Ace Freely from Kiss, Phil Mickelson, a lot of sports guys, but anyway, that kind of place. And they rented the house to start the recording process for their new album. And Travis, records some of the drum tracks before he heads out on tour with the transplants. Well, the band ended up getting kicked out of that Rancho Santa Fe house in March or April of 2003. So we're back to downtown San Diego, and this used to be the site of a place called 4th and B. Fantastic concert hall. We did a video on it in one of our concert venue videos. You can check that out, the history of it. Located conveniently enough at the corner of uh, 4th and B. And Blink-182 played a show here at 4th and B on January 16th, 1996, when they opened for Neurotic Boy Outsiders. Kind of a super group, if you will, that had Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols, Duff McKagan and Matt Sorum from Guns N' Roses, and John Taylor from Duran Duran. And Blink-182 is one of the opening bands for that show here at 4th and B. And Blink-182 came back to 4th and B in downtown San Diego on September 6, 2003 to play a benefit concert. So this is the new location for Soma, their third phase, if you will. Right next to the San Diego Sports Arena. They've been here for since the early 2000s, I guess. And Blink-182 did come back and play Soma after they'd kind of hit it big. And they played here at this particular Soma on November 21st, 2003, as part of their Dollar Bill tour. And that's the tour where every ticket was a dollar. So basically the band funded that tour themselves. Didn't make any money off that, but great deal for the fans. Well, after being kicked out of the house in Rancho Santa Fe, the band had to move the recording here to 9590 Chesapeake Drive in San Diego, which used to be Rolling Thunder Recording Studio. And there's a monument sign used to be right over there where that uh, new landscaping is. But this is where they partly recorded the album that uh, it's either called Blink-182 or Untitled. And they also did some recording as we mentioned over at Signature Sound, which is just a couple miles away from here. But this used to be Rolling Thunder recording studio and where Blink did uh, part of one of their albums. Well, we made it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the famous Sombreros, made famous in the Blink-182 song, Josie. So this is where they would uh, hang out after school. It's not too far from Rancho Bernardo High School, just down the road about a mile or so. And they would actually get fan mail here. Uh, people would send letters to Blink, Blink-182 here. And every 182nd day of the year is Blink-182 day here at Sombreros. So let's go inside and check it out. So there's actually a memorial tribute to Blink on the wall. You can see pictures of the guys. 
Uh, MTV brought them back here. MTV did a special about Blink 182, and they actually came to this Sombreros. Yeah, every 182nd day of the year, it's Blink-182 day. So the guy here said there's a mural in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Generally, I don't film in the bathrooms. Kind of a kind of a policy I got. Well, that's it. In 2023, as most of you Blink 182 fans know. Travis, Tom, and Mark all got back together for a big tour. And they came back to their hometown, their home county, and they played two sold out shows here at the Pechanga Arena, which was formerly called the San Diego Sports Arena. But two sold out shows in their hometown. And in June of 2024, June 30th, 2024 to be specific, Blink-182 came back to their home county of San Diego and played a sold-out show here at Petco Park, home of the San Diego Padres. Not too bad for a group of guys whose goal at the beginning was to sell out Soma. Also not too bad for a group of guys who called one of their tours the Poo Poo and Pee Pee Tour. But 40,000 plus people packed this place to see Blink-182 in their hometown show. So that's a wrap on our video for Blink and Blink-182 and their history around San Diego County. Now, some of you may be wondering whatever happened to Scott Rayner. Well, after he quit uh, Blink-182 or got fired, whichever it is, uh, he jammed with some other bands and recorded some music, but in 2023 he graduated from the police academy and he is now a police officer with the San Diego Police Department. And in January of 2024 he made the news. He helped rescue an older woman from uh, some flooding that was going on in San Diego after a big storm. So he's got that going for him. And then in October of 2024, San Diego Padres uh, clinched a wild card berth, and on October October 1st, actually of 2024, Tom DeLong threw out the first pitch at the Padres game on their wild card game. And while he was throwing out the first pitch, the crowd sang all the small things, and Tom joined in, and a great time was had by all. Sold out crowd at Petco Park again for Tom DeLong. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found a few nuggets of information. And those of you planning your own Blink tours, maybe you uh, found a place or two you can add to your list. But we got more coming. So we'll see you next time on Discover This.